Why didn't we make this sooner? I don't know how to it. <laughs> what Ava is so fondly looking at is a very interesting dish that I think probably a lot of you have heard of, although I'm not sure, we'll get to that in a minute. But you probably haven't seen this version of it. We're gonna show you how Ava made it, but first I should probably back up a little bit. Okay, I just spilled coffee everywhere. Ah, buongiorno. Easter's coming up, and that got me thinking recently about the very first Easter after Ava and I started our YouTube channel. We started getting a ton of comments and messages, people asking for a recipe from Ava for a dish I had never heard of. It seems like a dish that's very well known amongst Italian Americans, but maybe isn't very popular outside of that community. I, I still don't even know how to pronounce it. Pizza Gaina? Pizza Gaina? It's spelled like this. Anyway, I asked Ava about it. She had no idea what it was, and it took a little while for us to figure out uh, that it is a real Italian dish. It's just that, as sometimes happens, the name changed when it came to America. I'll let her explain more about that. Anyway, today, for the very first time, Ava is going to cook the, what would you call it, the ancestor of the pizza gaina, the dish that started it all, the dish that came to America and became, apparently, a beloved Italian-American dish here. The first time that I heard this name, uh, because uh, Gain or Gaina is not an Italian word, I didn't really know what they were meaning. And this is the name that we use in Italy. This pizza Chiena is also known as Pizza Rustica. So, two names for the same thing. Does that mean like what it sounds like to me, like rustic pizza? How can I describe the concept of pizza rustica? It's a pizza that is not a pizza, but it's savory, it's made in different kind, uh, in different ways. Uh, we, we will, okay, never one, day, one day we will explain. <laughs> pizza Chiena actually means uh, pizza stuffed, but please uh, don't make confusion between this pizza Chiena with uh, this one. Because pizza Chiena actually is a Calabrian dish that resembles the same thing, but is not the same thing. So pizza Gaina, 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 Gaina? I don't know, it's an American name. Pizza, pizza Gaina came from pizza Chiena, si. which means stuffed actually, pizza. See, si, actually it's like this comes from this. Do you understand? I think so. The first step to make our pizza Chiena is making the dough. Nowadays you find several kind of dough because this pizza Chiena is more or less a savory pie. So you can find a lot of people that they decide to make the crust out of a sort of pie crust, Italian pie crust, let's call it like that. But in origin they used the, the dough of bread plus some lard. So today I'm going to make this. I'm pretty sure that when they start to make pizza Chiena they didn't have uh, all-purpose flour. They didn't have a very fine flour. So I'm going to use this flour that is a stone, stone mill. Do you say this? Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit more rustic than the all-purpose flour. And it's a flour that has a very high protein content. So you can use uh, bread flour that is uh, a little bit better than all-purpose flour. We start uh, to add some yeast and uh, today because this is uh, a pretty old recipe I'm not going uh, to use any scale because they did by high and I'm doing by high. So it's also a sort of an experiment because if I make a mistake, it doesn't come out. So the yeast, we mix yeast into the flour. This is our beloved, or like actually my beloved <laughs> lard because uh, let's be honest, lard makes everything better.
I assume that means this is a southern Italian recipe. Certo, Albera. Certo. I'm going to add some olive oil because in the south of Italy we have a lot of olive oil and I'm pretty sure that they have enough to use for this. And now I start to work with my hands because I'm also pretty sure that they, they didn't have any kitchen aid, so they worked with hands. And also, working with hands makes you understand much, much more better, much better the consistency that you are looking for. If you leave just the machine do all the job, how you can tell? Speaking of which, what consistency are you looking for? Right now? I'm just mixing lard and olive oil. <laughs> right now there is no consistency, I'm just mixing. So anyway, after you mix for a little bit, you can start adding some water. A little bit at the time. You don't need to put all the water at once, because you don't know if actually you need all that. After you add the first part of water, you can add also the salt. I'm going to put more or less this amount. And maybe also another pinch. Keep mixing. Add some more water. You see how it starts to come together? We don't want a really soft dough. And with patience, we start to work on it. Now, here is the, there is a small problem for me. Because I'm a very short uh, southern Italian woman, I need something to be a little bit taller. So, Harper, please. Okay. Better? Much, much better. So the consistency that you want is this, which means uh, soft, but not soft, too soft, and uh, not sticky. It's pretty firm. See, it's on hard dough. And actually, it has also a reason why it should be on the harder side. And that reason, you can explain? Ah, see. Sì. <laughs> Is okay. it a secret? When they start to do this uh, preparation, uh, this dish, uh, they didn't really have a fridge. They made a very hard dough because uh, they preserved, they saved the storage in, uh, outside. It's like in the normal room, they didn't have the fridge. That it was uh, not soaked, like the dough wasn't soaked with uh, all the stuffing thing. Like the liquid from the, yeah. Bravo. So after 10 minutes of kneading the dough, our dough should look like that. So what we do now is we let it rest, cover it for about 10, 15 minutes, because it needs to relax. 15 minutes later. Just work a little bit more, but just a little bit. Because right now that the gluten is relaxed, as you can see, it's very, very smooth. We leave our dough rice for hours, hours and a half. It needs to more or less double in size. And meanwhile, we need to understand what we can put inside, because don't forget, it's called the pita chiena, so we need to put something inside. Before Ava starts assembling the pie, a quick word about today's video's sponsor. Okay, I know this is going to come as a shock to many of you, but if I'm being honest, I don't have the best beard genetics ever. I try my darndest, but it's a little thin, it's a little patchy, but you know what I've learned? That just means I need to take extra good care of it, which is why I use Harry's razors. Harry's doesn't make just any old razor. The German engineered handcrafted blades are super sharp. They give you a really close and comfortable shave. With a flex hinge and precision trimmer, it's really easy to get into those hard to reach places. The razors themselves last longer than any razors I've ever used before, but when you do need new ones, they're conveniently shipped right to your door. 
but probably best of all is simply the value of Harry's razors. They're fair priced for everyone, no outrageous price tags, just premium quality at an affordable price. I highly recommend getting the starter pack, which comes with a five blade German engineered razor cartridge, a weighted textured handle, shave cream with aloe, and a travel blade cover. If you click our link down in the description below, you can get the trial set for just $5. That's a $13 value, but only for five bucks. Check them out, you won't regret it. And a big thank you to Harry's for sponsoring today's video. So what goes inside of a pizza can? This was a dish made also by poor people. So farmers usually. So what they had usually on ants, they had the eggs, they had the cheese, they had the cured meat, like salami, prosciutto. So you can kind of put on what you have? What you have in the fridge, I see. Ricotta? Ah. There are people who make pizza again with ricotta, but the traditional version is made with a ricotta, so put the ricotta. Uh, prosciutto crudo. Va bene. Uh, got just about every kind of cheese imaginable. I'm guessing you don't want that. This is a uh, smoked mozzarella, and we have some Chicago cheese, aka primo sale. This for sure can work out, but. Ricotta salata, and assuming that pecorino, parmigiano. Alpiero, you are assuming right because here we are using the, fundam the fundamental. There isn't a dish in Italy without this. That pretty much sums up what we have, unless you want some uh, ketchup. I assume that this is a joke. Alpiero, actually, there is a thing that we are missing. We're missing something here? See, Harper, we are missing mortadella. So do we have enough stuff now? <laughs> we will see. When we stuff it, we will see. Maybe we need something more, but I don't know. Here we have uh, some pecorino. Here we have uh, what they call uh, smoked mozzarella. That's from Whole Foods. I know, but this is not the mozzarella. This is very close maybe to a scamorza, a provola. Provola fumicato. It's not bad. Then here we have some ricotta salata. Here we have a leftover of parmigiano arber. This is the one I'm most curious about. It seems like primo sale, but it's called Chicago cheese, and I don't really know what that is. I've never heard of that before. It should be a fresh sheep cheese. And this is what Primo Sale is. It's a fresh sheep cheese. It looks like a Primo Sale. By the way, we don't have time today, but if you want to make your own Primo Sale, you can watch this video here. It's a Primo Sale. No, actually, it's also a very good Primo Sale. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, Genoa style salami, right? What the hell? Genoa style with the with the like black pepper. Guys, it doesn't exist in Italy Genoa salami. There is some salami in Liguria, yes, but there isn't a Genoa salami style. This should be what we call in Italy salame Milano. This looks like salame Milano. Speaking of which, where's this dish from? This dish up here is from Campania. You can't you tell from all this? <laughs> it's from Campania. How much prosciutto or how much salami? How much meat? So in other words, you're not overly concerned about measuring your ingredients here. Zero, Arthur, zero. I'm just checking if the ratio between cheese and meat is right. Okay, if there is a pink, the pink is predominant, maybe you need more cheese. If the white is predominant, maybe you need more meat. So that's it for the cheese? No, but we need to rate some parmigiano and some pecorino. We need 
need some eggs because Easter usually is the period of the year in which the chicken they make a lot of eggs <laughs> So now mix this cheese and meat with the eggs. So because I don't know how much I need, I start to pour some grated cheese. How do you know how much you need? At the end, the grated cheese in this recipe should work a little bit like a thickener. So it should thicken a little bit the eggs. Oh. Well, it looks like you need more. <laughs> Bravo, Arthur. <laughs> Our dough is uh, risen. Risen. So I'm going to use uh, this, this uh, in Campania, where this dish is from, uh, from in Avellino, they call this ruoto. What we need to do here is uh, sprinkle some uh, oil, do you sprinkle the oil? Maybe brush it with some yeah. oil? We brush with some oil. <laughs> now you sprinkle the flour. Yeah. <laughs> you brush Driz your... Drizzle the oil and then brush it. Semolina flour, we need just a little bit, not too much. Why do you use semolina flour for this? Because the semolina flour helps you to spread the dough, but it doesn't really, the dough incorporates it. We need to do the first part and then the second part. So I would say that I'm um, divided like more or less in uh, three. With a fork, we make some hole and we pour the stuffing in the pizza. With the other third, we make, uh, how do you say, the lid, the top the lid. I like more the lid. We take uh, here the lid uh, and we just, how do you see, trim. You don't need to be really 100% precise. Now we close it. So you're just rolling it up, huh? That's it. Maybe you can use also fork just to be sure we make some hole also here. And then, as they did in the past, because as you can see here, you have other egg, other cheese. With your hands, and our pizza canna is ready to be. We are going to bake the pizza can at uh, 3, 370 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Whatever that says. I know, because uh, in, uh, in Celsius it should be about 190. Uh, maybe it can take about 45, 50 minutes. I think that here we are going to have a very good pizza can. It looks amazing. So at the end, my pizza guy now cooked for about 55 minutes. Is 
of time? See, si, maybe. <laughs> you sound very confident. We are cutting this now. But the best way should be wait until tomorrow. Whoa. That looks so good. See, it looks good. Now we need to eat it. <laughs> this looks so incredibly good. Not to mention smells. This smells amazing in here. It just looks so great. I can see why that became a really big deal here. We're going hands in, huh? Yes, Arpid. How do you want to eat this? I guess it is called pizza, despite not being pizza at all. Buon appetito! Buon appetito! That's so great. That is a great, great thing. That is too good. <laughs> the dough is really interesting because it's it's not that kind of flaky pie crust that I was sort of expecting for a dish like this. It's like actual bread, but it's super, super good. I had the, back in Italy also the version with the ricotta because for example, in Napoli, they use the ricotta. They mix egg and ricotta. The traditional one with just the egg just the egg. If we put on aside all the rest, in my opinion, is much better. I don't have much to compare it to, like but this is one of the most delicious things ever. I think this has to be the best Easter anything I've ever had. You're thinking of pastiata. <laughs> yeah, pastiata. Okay, you've got me there. I'll put a link to Ava's pastiata recipe. If That's I need another. To think of yeah, yeah. A dish that yeah. is is the. Fair enough. I need to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who wrote to us to tell me to tell Ava to make this dish. I wish I'd been a little bit snappier on that because I could have used this in my life for the last few years. From now on, you know what you're going, one of the things that you're going to eat for Easter. For Easter? Anytime, anytime. When is a bad time for this? Before we go, a quick shout out to uh, two pasta grammarians, a mother and a daughter who have been watching and they made these mostacholi calabresi. I feel I should tell that they have a job in Soriano with me. Yeah. The cornucopia looks amazing, so. It looks amazing. Thanks for trying out the recipe. Also a big thank you to Harry's for sponsoring today's video. The link will be down below so you can get their starter pack for only $5. We will be taking Easter off, so we won't be here next week. But you should go follow us on social media because Easter is kind of a big deal for Southern Italians. And so I don't know what yet, but I'm pretty sure Ava has some big epic stuff up her sleeve and we'll be posting stuff there. And that's it. Let's say goodbye because we need to start to cook for the next Sunday. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. The first rule is to open the mortadella. <laughs> if you know how. How to do this because I don't know. I can close this one like that. Let's do it the other side. Okay.